Endometriosis is a condition where the endometrium or the lining of the womb that women shed every month in the form of a period is found in places outside the womb which can be at the back of the uterus, in the ovaries, um, in the peritoneal lining or the lining that is there inside our abdomen um, and in remote places um, like the breathing muscle, the diaphragm or the lungs, uh, in operative scar sites. So when you find this abnormal tissue in any of these ectopic sites, it is called endometriosis. There is a different form of endometriosis called adenomyosis. And adenomyosis is nothing but the same lining penetrating through the muscle of the womb and growing there. Now, unfortunately for women with this condition, what happens is just like during a period, the blood sheds out of the uterus through the vagina to the outside. These places where this ectopic tissue grows, there is nowhere for that blood to escape. So this ectopic endometrial tissue grows in response to the hormones every month. And once the growth is complete and the time for shedding comes, that tissue sheds there. And that initiates a local inflammatory reaction. That leads to scarring and bringing together of different organs in close proximity to the uterus as well as the ovaries. Endometriosis in the ovaries leads to the formation of cysts which bleed every month within it and lead to the formation of what we call endometriomas or chocolate cysts. It is believed that 10 to 15 percent of women actually harbor this condition and this is only a rough estimate, it could be much more than that. The problem being is that people are blissfully unaware of this condition. So there could be a lot more women on the streets in their houses who could have this condition but they take it as a norm and they live with it through the pain, through the agony, through the painful periods, etc. Now, unfortunately, A, there is no awareness and B, this disease can be quite silent. And therefore, when women are actually diagnosed with endometriosis, a lot of them have come for some other problem. It may be that they have come with a tummy upset. It may be they have come with symptoms of infertility. Or some of my patients have actually just come for a master health checkup and incidentally it has been found that they have endometriosis. When I talk about infertility, about 30% of my infertile patients harbour this disease condition. It is also said that women who delay conception, who get married late, are also predisposed to this condition. Stress which is always on the rise, also plays an important part in allowing this condition to proliferate. Of course, one must not forget that some women are genetically predisposed to this condition and therefore you could see families where the mothers and sisters and aunts are all affected with this condition. Typically, you know, girls are taught that periods are painful and that they must take painkillers and get on with life. But if you are suffering from painful periods for a very long time, it is maybe time to go and see somebody and ask for help. Don't just put up with painful periods, assuming that that is the norm. Some women will suffer from pain that starts from a week or 10 days before the onset of the period, continue into the period and last even after the period is finished. Then there are others who will present to me with chronic pelvic pain and they aren't sure whether this pain is related to their womb or is it related to their bowel or is it something else that they are harboring. There are women who will present with infertility and it is very distressing and depressing for them to find out that they cannot embark straight away on infertility treatment because they first have to sort out the management of this disease condition. Then there are women who have purely bowel symptoms. 
they have very painful opening of bowels during their periods and this is called dyskesia. There are women who will suffer from pain while passing urine during their periods and then there are others who will go through phases of alternate constipation and diarrhea and this is called irritable bowel syndrome. So the manifestations of this disease condition is absolutely varied. We now have transvaginal scanning which is available in every single gynae clinic and that should always be used when you are suspecting endometriosis or any other benign gynae condition. In advanced cases of endometriosis, we may need to resort to other imaging modalities such as MRI and this helps us identify the involvement of other visceral organs like the bladder, the bowel and also helps us plan our surgery appropriately and adequately especially if you're going to need the assistance of other specialties like the colorectal surgeon or the urologist. We then do things like intravenous urography to delineate the ureters because we think they are involved in the disease process. Then if you ask me, the gold standard diagnostic modality is a laparoscopy where we actually put in a camera into the patient's tummy through their belly button to have a look. And then once you've diagnosed the condition, you could either do a see and treat where you are prepared with the diagnosis and you treat at the same sitting as you see. Or you could do a diagnostic laparoscopy and then refer the patient to a tertiary center which has the expertise to manage this patient correctly and adequately. CA125 assessments, which is a blood test, is something that we use for monitoring of endometriotic cysts, uh, especially because there is a small chance that these cysts can actually have cancer brewing inside. And therefore, we recommend that annual CA125 assessments are done for these endometriotic cysts. Talking of treatment, um, one can manage a patient depending on what the patient's um, stage of endometriosis is, what are her circumstances, what are her expectations. So whenever you plan treatment, it is tailor-made to the individual. You have to offer the patient all the available modalities of management and allow the patient to make an informed choice based on her symptomatology and the modalities of treatment available. There are hormonal tablets that can be taken in the form of the oral contraceptive pill or the progesterone only pill that can be taken continuously for three months or six months back to back and then take a short break and have fewer periods in a year because the greater the number of periods the greater the exacerbation in the symptom of the patient because if you can imagine that the patient is bleeding outside every month she's bleeding inside every month as well therefore if you reduce the number of periods she will have less of an inflammatory reaction on the inside and that will kind of give her a quieter phase in her life you have other modalities like the Mirena which is a levonorgestrel intrauterine device which can be fixed into a patient's womb especially if she has completed her childbearing or wants a break between her two kids and is also suffering from endometriosis the constant release of the progesterone inside the womb allows for the disease to go into a quiescent phase there are women who can be treated with other hormone injections such as the gonadotropin releasing hormone analog or the GnRH analog now these injections are available as either monthly injections or three monthly depot injections. These injections induce a medical menopause. So they switch off the ovaries completely, therefore reduce the amount of estrogen that is feeding this ectopic endometrial tissue. If patients want a surgical approach, which may be required, especially if they have infertility, and they want to enhance their fertility potential where there's a huge distortion in the anatomy of the pelvis. The one thing that has to be made very clear to the patient 
is that surgery is not 100% curative that means they are not going to get rid of the disease forever surgery can only excise active disease as is seen at the time of the surgery endometriosis is a bit like cancer it doesn't kill you but it debilitates you severely and there is no 100% cure it is therefore very important to raise the awareness of this disease condition and catch it early and help women get some quality of life in their daily routine fortis has therefore initiated as a part of well women care the fortis endometriosis treatment center through this center we hope to reach out to millions of women who are suffering this disease in a silent way and allowing it to progress to an advanced stage where helping them completely may not be possible but it is very very important that awareness is created for this condition and that we reach out to all of those women who are silently suffering on a daily basis